All right, so we're getting pretty close to being done over here. However, uh, I've been having a few problems with the uh, the one saw that I've been using here, and I need to get those problems sorted, but I also really wanna get this stuff wrapped up because we don't have that much left here to do, and we still actually have some decent weather here, and I wanna get this done before it starts getting colder and less fun to be out here cutting this stuff up. Now, my other chainsaw, it's about half the horsepower, half the cc's, whatever. Uh, it's got a shorter bar on it, so we aren't going to be able to uh, fill the rack up all the way and do that. So what I think I'm gonna do is bring the skid steer over here, shove what we got left over here closer. Uh, I wanna move, oh, before we do that, I wanna move the rack to the other side because this end of this second row is just about filled up. So that way that's right in front of where we're stacking we'll just shove all of this stuff over here and then i can just kind of chuck in half a dozen pieces that'll make it easy uh, since we got a shorter bar just cut through what's there stack that up put a few more pieces in and do it that way it's going to take a little longer it's going to be a little bit more uh, manual labor but uh, it should allow us to get this project wrapped up Well, we ran out of light last time we were out of here, and it's gonna start raining here in a little bit, but I wanna see if we can't get this mostly finished up. Our second row is just about done. Uh, we need to get another post here at the end to uh, keep stuff from rolling down there because we've got about as much in there as we can get. Then I've got a bunch of short stuff in the rack here that we need to get cut to length. And then we still have some stuff that's kind of laying around out here. There's a bunch of bark over there, which I'm not going to mess with. There's not enough BTUs and bark to mess with that and try getting that uh, stacked and put up for burning. It's just not worth it. But there is still some small bits and pieces of wood that I think I'm going to try getting picked up out of there. All right, so the next step for getting all this stuff cleaned up is I wanna come over here with the skid steer and then back drag across here and try getting all of these pieces of bark. Uh, there's a bunch of little pieces of wood left over here, but they're getting pretty rotten, pretty buggy. So I think I'm just gonna get all that stuff piled up off to the side over near the fence and just leave it there and let it rot away because I don't think it's really worth the effort of trying to pick it up and stack it and use it for wood. And then the idea is to not really be stacking any slab wood over here anymore because what I want to do is just as it comes off the mill, throw it into the cutting rack. When that starts getting full, just bring it over here and cut all that up into firewood and then bring the empty rack back over and start filling it. That way, hopefully we can avoid getting a huge mess of a pile of pickup sticks uh, for uh, slab wood here and having to deal with all that. Now, you may have noticed that we also have a fairly decent little size pile of sawdust over here. 
and I also want to get that moved out of the way as well. Now, as we move that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that rock grizzly that I built earlier this year for separating out the rock from the garden area, and I'm actually looking for something in this pile of sawdust. And that is one of these guys. And if you don't know what this is, this is one of the uh, kind of stops that goes on the sawmill that you can use to keep the uh, the log from rolling off the back of the mill. And I'm missing one of these, these long ones here. And uh, you, you can just ignore that little piece missing out of there. That was definitely not for me hitting it with the bandsaw mill. Uh, but anyways, I've been missing one for a while now. My suspicion is that somehow it got scooped up when I was getting sawdust out of there one time. So we're going to run all that stuff through the rock grizzly and uh, see if we can't find that. Well, I gotta say, I'm a little confused now, because I really thought it was going to be in here. Uh, unless I missed it somehow in some of those bigger clumps of stuff that fell out, uh, now I have no idea where this thing is. So it was pretty good timing today that while we're on the, uh, the topic of cutting up firewood and fixing stovepipe and all that sort of stuff, on the other side of the mountain here is National Forest. And I saw something a day or two ago that they were doing some uh, prescribed burning. And I kind of forgot about it until this afternoon when I was out here. And I looked up towards the mountain and thought, man, it sure looks hazy. And then as I followed it back over there, I remembered that, that right over in there is the area where they were going to be doing some burning. And uh, you can smell it. I imagine this is what it's like out in a lot of the western states every summer. But... This is kind of unusual for around here. All right, folks, so the last thing that we are going to work on for this video is we need to replace this reducer right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and preface this by saying that anything that I have here for my stove should not be regarded as being up to code or in any way the way that you should do it if you're planning on putting something in. Uh, so, you know, just make sure that you talk to someone that knows what they're doing and that you know what you're doing if you're going to do it yourself. So, this reducer here came with this stove and I noticed that it does have a small stress crack in it and I think that's just from repeated heating and cooling cycles and it just weakened that metal and created a small crack about this long and that wide. So, it's very, very small but nonetheless, it really needs to be replaced. So. I picked up a new reducer, but there's a couple things. So for one, we're going to have to kind of pull this off, slide the, uh, the elbow back, and then drop that down. Then we can get the uh, reducer out. But before that, we got to brace this entire thing so that it doesn't come sliding down. And then in addition to that, this reducer is not the same height as this one. This one is shorter, and so what we're going to have to do is take the screws out of this uh, telescopic section here, slide this up, get it into position, and then put our screws back in uh, to uh, reposition that. So we're going to do one more thing here while we have the stovepipe out, and that is I'm going to put a piece of metal back in here because 
with the 8 inch elbow that comes out of the back of the stove, then we go into the reducer. Both those pieces are single wall. And for single wall, you really want a bigger uh, air gap between the pipe and any, uh, any other object, which for the way it was set up, I just couldn't really get the amount that I really needed. Now I have been keeping an eye on how hot stuff gets and how hot this back part gets and I haven't really been too concerned about the temperatures that it gets up to but I decided that just as a safety precaution what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this back here and I'll leave probably a couple inches of air gap in between this and our back wall here. That way it'll allow air to circulate around behind here and between here and that should help keep this part from getting quite so warm. Um, should be a little bit safer. I don't know if it really matters or not, but we're, we're gonna do it anyways, and I, I think it should be a little bit better. All right, so I think we're ready to start putting things back together. Um, I'm not exactly sure the best way to do this, but I'm just gonna wing it and see what happens, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. labels are at the back. All right. Now, we just need to see if we're tight all the way up against there. If we are, then we can put screws back in here, and I think we're good. Uh, yeah. Okay. I remember this from last time, that these self-tapping screws were not real good at self-tapping, so I'm going to go ahead and drill pre-drill a hole in here and uh, that should make things go a little smoother. All right, now just as a quick safety precaution, I'm gonna go ahead and get up on the roof there, make sure everything up top looks good. There shouldn't be any reason anything up there got disconnected or anything, but better safe than sorry. Alright, well our, our cap isn't quite sitting on there, quite level, I think I want to see if I can't get that seated on there a little better, maybe. You guys better not fall off of there. I guess that's alright, it's not quite, not quite sitting square on it, but it looks like it's down as far as it can go. looks tight. That looks tight. 
sealant looks good. A little bit of water right there. That's interesting. Might want to put a little bit more caulking right around there just to make sure that you don't get a, a leak coming through. All right, I think we're good to go. plenty of smoke in here that's for sure man all right folks well i think that about does it for this video all totaled we ended up with right about three cords of slab wood there's a little bit of other stuff in there as well but in addition to that probably had another half a cord or so of small stuff that went into these uh the tubs you saw me pick it up there as well, although a lot of that probably is not going to be real great burning. Slab wood is not the, the best wood to start with for burning just because it's got a lot of bark and a lot of sap wood. But the stuff that got picked up off the ground that was the real small pieces uh, is going to be even worse. A lot of that started to rot just a little bit or it's gotten some bugs in it. So that's that's not going to provide a whole lot of heating value and in addition to that i also have probably a little under half a cord of stuff that's left over from last year now i really have no idea how much i'm going to go through uh, i only got the stove in last year i think it was uh, right towards the end of december so i didn't have a full year of burning and I didn't go through a whole lot of wood. I think it was probably maybe a cord, cord and a half. So I think this should be plenty for the amount of burning that I do out here. And that's in addition to the fact that uh, we've had an unseasonably warm uh, early winter so far. And so I haven't really had this thing cranking a whole lot this year. And uh, even when I have, it just is kind of a little bit of fire to take the chill off the, the loft up in here. Now, I'm actually really surprised and pleased with that plate that I put back there. Uh, the stove has been going for probably an hour, hour and a half. And that area behind where I put in that extra plate is still actually cold to the touch. Uh, I really didn't think it would provide that much of a difference, but it's it's a huge change. That was definitely a good idea to put that in. And I know I'm going to get probably at least one person asking, what is that hole coming out of the top of the stove? I think I've covered it before, but there's a blower on the back of the stove. The stove has a double wall going around the back and up through the top. So when you turn the blower on, it pushes the air up through those walls and then comes out this top thing. And then I just put a six inch single wall elbow on there. That way it's kind of directing that hot air out into the room and it helps to heat it up a little bit better in here. So I think that's about all I have to say. If I remember anything else, I'll put a uh, pinned comment down in the uh, comment section with any extra info. And if you have any questions, feel free to put those down there and I'll do my best to answer that. That is gonna be it for this week's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.